although I'm not against saving, it's not a complete strategy. Right. So when people do that and they go, this is what ends up in midlife crisis because they get to a point where they're like, I was good. I saved 10% of my income. I did what I was told to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not complete. So there's a lot of great advice, mm-hmm. but it's it's piecing it together so that you can actually become financially free. Absolutely. And that's what not a lot of people are able to do. Wherever you guys are watching this show, I would truly appreciate it if you follow or subscribe. It helps a lot with the algorithm. It helps us get bigger and better guests, and it helps us grow the team. Truly means a lot. Thank you guys for supporting. And here's the episode. All right, guys, got Jason Greystone here today. We're going to talk uh, financial freedom. Everyone's goal, right? Everyone's goal. And uh, not many people people hit it. Not many people. Not many people hit it young, too. No. And I think there's a lot of people that want to hit it younger and younger, which is um, causing a lot of problems, right? Right. Especially on social media. Yeah. When did you start diving down this road? Uh, I was 20, just coming up to the 22nd birthday. Hmm. And um, I was found out I was going to have a uh, child. Wow, it's wasn't ready for that at all. Yeah. yeah, and he's in the green room right now, <laughs> and uh, he's nineteen now. Wasn't ready for it. Didn't want that. I had a really poor upbringing, and I had, you know, I just wanted security. I wanted all the things that I didn't have, and um, just yeah, it made me. It put a rocket up me to to figure this stuff out. So mm. I went deep into investing and wealth building and tried every trick in the book, man. Yeah, from there's, every, everything. There's yeah. a lot of traditional teachings that I disagree with. Yep. So you got to be very careful who you listen to in the financial space. Well, there's lots of incomplete strategies, like and and a lot of them have got agendas to yeah. promote certain things, and they add a little lot of showmanship to it to to sell it. One of the things, like Robert Kiyosaki, you know, great guy, great doing great work, but you know, the whole ten percent of your income thing, save ten percent of your income. You save ten percent of your income for ten years, you've saved one year's income. Mm. And if you do that for 40 years, at which you're at work for, you've got four years income left. Mm-hmm. So although I'm not against saving, it's not a complete strategy. Right. So when people do that and they go, this is what ends up in midlife crisis, because they get to a point where they're like, I was good. I saved 10% of my income. I did what I was told to do. Mm-hmm. And then it gets closer and closer and they realize they can't retire. Mm. And then it's like, crap, I better start living and yeah. buy a a convertible car or yeah, something, yeah. you know, they go and blow the money and go and live for a few years. But yeah, yeah it's not complete. So there's a lot of great advice, mm-hmm. but it's it's piecing it together so that you can actually become financially free. Absolutely. And that's what not a lot of people are able to do. I'm not a fan of saving, dude. No. Just because of inflation, mm-hmm. um, your money's going down so yeah. fast. Yeah, right. So if you save 100K in like 10 years, it'll be worth probably 70, 80. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I mean, the, the cost of, I mean, inflation means that the cost of living will double every 16 20 years or so yeah um so even that like if you need it people say i want to be a millionaire by 30 millionaire by 40 well when you get there you're going to need two million right if you want today's lifestyle that's without you saying you want to up your lifestyle increase your lifestyle Agreed. if you want to increase your lifestyle you need even more yeah you need three four million right being a millionaire should no longer be the goal for it people should not up. be the goal it's such a fluffy goal and this is one of the things that i you know, I try and promote as much as possible. You want to be a millionaire, great. But most millionaires are equity millionaires anyway. And you can't, you know, if that's in property, you can't take a brick off of your house and go and pay for breakfast. With it, right? <laughs> yeah. You need income to have a great life. And the goal is a great life, not a millionaire. Mm-hmm. So you just need cat. You need income. Yeah. And you get income from a lot of the time, not being a millionaire. <laughs> it's <laughs> ironic, right? It's so, it's so true. Yeah. So true. And I totally agree with you. Millionaire should not be the goal. It's a very, very fluffy goal. Yeah. So what's your advice when it comes to buying real estate? Because I am on the fence. Grant Cardone <laughs> says it's one of the worst investments uh, you can make for a personal home. But yeah. How do you feel about it? Yeah, for me, I mean, proper, I look at it this way. Property is a, an asset to a degree. Um, but I'm much more of... A, a, I much more favor putting my money into things that grow and evolve whilst I'm asleep. Mm. So I'll give you an example. If I invest in Apple and Microsoft and stocks and companies, yeah. right? you've essentially got the greatest minds on the planet round the table whilst I'm asleep, mm. thinking of ways how they can outdo each other and innovate and grow these, you know, and, and build these great products. Yep. And I'm asleep. 
Or you could buy a house which is rotting and decaying <laughs> and it needs repairs and the roof needs redoing and the grass needs cutting and the fences are breaking and you've got tenants that come in. Okay, they pay you some money, but they're also setting things alight and burning the carpet and mm. you know, all these kind of things. And it's just a headache. So I like to put my money into things that are not going backwards. Right. Um, I, I like to put things into evolution. And for me, human beings are, are that. Yeah. I'd, I'd much rather invest in humans and real life and companies that are breathing and living and moving forward rather than something that's rotting and decaying in mm. the sun. Another investment you have is in the Forex space, right? Yeah. So uh, that was the last piece of the puzzle. I don't recommend. I recommend most people don't trade. Okay. Right, first and foremost. Um, just not most people can't do it or most people go into it as the first point of call, like to make money. Right, right. Whereas I went into it as the last piece of the puzzle to replace the last piece of income that I needed to, to not have to work. Mm. Right. And underneath all of that, I had lots of passive investments, lots of cash, lots of, you know, solid fixed income investments. Right. Um, and then I could afford to speculate a little bit and lose a bit of money mm. until I eventually came good. And then, found my feet and uh and and when you're in that state you can concentrate and you can focus and you're more poised whereas if you are gambling everything you've got on something you you know that's very volatile mm -hmm. and you can't pay the bills or you need that money to pay for food you're not that very approach is is the thing that's going to stop you from being able to master it mm. because you need to be process oriented logical minded you know right. you need to you need to be able to make decisions. And, and when you're irrational or you're in poverty, you mm -hmm. just can't. And that's the problem with people that get into Forex or crypto, these get-rich-quick schemes they or whatever. Need, they're desperate for money, a lot of them. Too and, desperate. And, yeah, look, desperate for money. There was a, there was a study uh, done in India, 56 cities around southern India, and they, they tested the farmers' IQs. Mm. And when the, when the market was booming and you know the crop was good and market was great mm -hmm. uh, their iq raised by 30 points holy crap that's yeah. a huge jump huge right and when it was in when, when they're in poverty and the market was dropping and you know it was slow it dropped by you know up to 30 points mm. up to 30 points so it just proves that when you're in a level of poverty and, and when i say poverty i mean you can't um are you interested in coming on the Digital Social Hour podcast as a guest? Well, click the application link below in the description of this video. We are always looking for cool stories, cool entrepreneurs to talk to about business and life. Click the application link below, and here's the episode, guys. Maintain or upkeep the home comforts that you've acclimatized to, right? That's, that's what I define poverty as. It's, yeah. it's your own personal um, comfort that you can't maintain. And when that drops and you go into this kind of animal mode, you can't possibly think about learning complex skills such mm -hmm. as trading. It's impossible. So the, the, the position you're in is the problem. And the, the approach you're taking to learn to trade mm. is, is what's stopping you from being able to learn to trade. Right. Right. And, That's crazy. And, and whereas if you've got money in the bank and cash in the bank and you've, you've put some money into maybe some you know, index funds and then you've put a bit more into large cap stocks and then maybe you've kind of wet your feet a bit mm -hmm. uh, and you've worked your way up into kind of medium cap stocks or maybe some property. When you then go, right, I'm going to go onto a roulette table or I'm going to go and <laughs> play poker or I'm going to go and learn to trade. If you allocate that portion correctly, if you lose it, you're not losing the house. Right. Therefore, you just don't, you don't care. And, yeah. and it's, it's fine. Absolutely. Most people don't do that. No. So going back to how we started, having a kid at 22, mm. there's a lot of people right now watching this, having kids at 20s, 30s that yeah. are living paycheck to paycheck. I know a few of my friends right now in this situation. What did you do from there? Yeah. So first of, first of all, I did save, right? So I started saving my money. Um, I was already doing that before I found out that we was going to have a, a boy. But it was really, I became fascinated with this idea that I could replace my income from more leveraged income streams. So I was an electrician. Mm -hmm. um, I was going out and I was an electrical engineer and, you know, exchanging my time for money, having to go into London every day on building sites and all the rest of it. I wanted income where I could, that I could generate being mobile and, uh, and more passive, you know, mm -hmm. require less time to do it. Um, and I created this kind of system where I thought, well, if I, if I, invest 10% of my income and get a 10% return per year, which, you know, 
seems high for some people and low for others. Um, I can replace my income in about 20 years, right? And just when I figured that out, I thought, well, you know, why don't they teach that in school? Because yeah. you go to work for like 45 years, typically, <laughs> right? And I thought, and the math worked out. And I was like, wow, okay, what about getting this thing down? So then I started going, what if I increase my savings every three months and put those into investments? And then what if I can um, increase my income? So I started looking at, you know, overtime. I was, I was working hard. I was getting as, basically putting as much money into this system that I was creating so that it would churn and start spitting out um return like returns right um and then it was like okay how can i take this to the next level and speculate a little bit so then i had i had to learn a skill i had to learn how to read financial statements i learned how to pick stocks and value invest and Mm -hmm. then i just took it further and further until the point i learned how to trade financial markets that took me about three years Mm -hmm. and uh, i lost probably 40 grand nearly in three years um on the early part, about in the first year, I lost about forty oh, grand. After about three years, I came profitable. Mm-hmm. Not much, but it was enough. And um, after that point, I'd replace my income. So from start to finish, I got it. I was started at twenty years, and I got it down to about three and a half. Wow! After the point that I became profitable, trading. that's incredible. Yeah. So by twenty nine, so I was twenty one when I found out. Struggle, struggle. You know, did all the thing, and then by twenty nine, I was I'd completely replaced my income that I was getting from my job. And I'm nice. Tired. And you mentioned ten percent a year. Do you think that's still enough to aim for these days? Um, I think temp, anyone can get ten percent per year for starters. And if you think about that, if you like, if I, if the first question that you said about financial freedom, if you ask the room who wants to be financially free, everyone would put their hand up. Right. right. If you ask how many people have achieved it, everyone's hand would go down. <laughs> Maybe two hands, yeah. one hand. Right. Um, because the, the the truth is, it's like two to three percent of the population actually become completely financially wow. free. And then when you look at what most people working towards financial freedom are actually doing, and you look at their savings and how much they've got in their bank account, you see that it's like fifteen hundred dollars, like on average, right? Right. Anyone who saves, the average people that save, have got about fifteen hundred dollars in their savings account. So even if you got ten percent per year, right? That's better than not, like that's better than nothing, and anyone can go and do that. You go and put it into a high growth index fund, and over time, you will approximate ten percent per year, which it has done over the last ninety three years that I've been studying, like you know that I've been that I've studied, and um, anyone can do that, right? It's it's slow, um, but it's wise, and it's and it's something that. What's the what's the risk? What's the worst case? You're going to have that money still, right. which most people don't have. This is the kind of argument I have with people. It's like, mm-hmm. what's the worst, <laughs> what what what's the alternative? Okay, have nothing. You know, don't do anything and lose your money. Mm. Um, so you're going to have it. Um, the other thing is, like, a lot of people think pensions are boring. Yeah, pensions are boring, but a lot of people don't do the numbers. So talking about ten percent being enough, the average life expectancy is seventy seven at the moment if mm. that's crossed between men and women the average retirement age is 65 mm. so you've got 12 years right at the end of your job hoping that you die at 77 the average pension pot in the uk is about 87 and a half grand mm. that is about six grand a year or wow. 600 pounds per month to live nothing on, which is like 900 dollars a month yeah now after you've worked for 45 years and you've really put in your hard work right you don't want to be living a lifestyle of eight hundred, nine hundred dollars no. dollars a, a month, right? In your golden years, mm-hmm. as they call it. But people don't do the numbers, and then if, it, and then you have to hope that you die at seventy seven because your money's run out, and you've got more money at the end of your life, or more life at the end of your money than money at the end of your life. So, otherwise, you become a burden on your kids, or right. you become a burden on. And no one wants to become a burden. Like, I don't want to. For sure. Oh, please help me. You know, <laughs> no one wants to be in that situation. So people don't do the numbers. If they did do their numbers, they'd think, right, okay, I need this much by then. And then 10% might be enough for them. If it isn't, then what I, what I would suggest is increasing your savings. Too many people buy so much stuff now that they don't need mm. to impress people that they don't they care about. Right? For sure. Yeah, we all know that. We all got to do that phase. We all go through it. Yeah, we, we definitely all go through it. And I've had all the love, love, nice cars. and yeah. you know, I'm in a place now where I've just got enough. If I could live this day forever, I'd be a very happy person and... and you know, I, I love my life. Hmm. 
I don't need anything else. Um, but not everyone's got that and everyone's kind of still chasing, chasing, chasing. But a lot of buying this stuff to impress other people is shaving years and years off of your chances of becoming financially free. It's also um, removing your chance completely of mm. becoming financially free. Uh, and, and that's the truth of it. So instead of doing that, put the demand on your own lifestyle. Truly pay yourself first. Everyone talks about pay yourself first. I don't think most people understand what that actually means. Paying yourself first means putting more of your, like, as soon as you get paid, mm -hmm. you put more into your investments and before you buy all of that stuff mm. so that you feel the pinch in your own life. And it's like, wow, you know, I've just increased my savings. I don't know how I'm going to afford something like I don't know how to afford to eat next week. But that's the magic. Something happens when you do that. When you, when you put a demand on your own lifestyle, something happens. You'll get a client ring you and say, oh, can we work? on that project right. it's always happened to me like and, and the best way to think about it and, and prove my point is if anyone's got kids when they found out they were going to have a kid they were like i can't how are we going to afford this hmm. but yes you did it yeah right? and the reason you did it is because you didn't have a choice so paying yourself first is that exact same situation where, it, where you just say i have to make this work this is like a tax if it was tax you'd pay it but if it's your own investments you don't Whereas I did, that was, that was the difference. It was like, yeah. I have to do this first. This is the first priority. Um, and yeah, you, you can absolutely do it. And then, and then the beauty is the more money you have in, in, in the market or the more liquidity you have, the more your creative brain comes alive mm -hmm. and allows you to learn new things. So then you can learn about stocks and then you can learn about you see other opportunities that you didn't see before because your head was in the sand. Right. Right. So now you're open to opportunity and a suggestion and, Oh, do you want to come in on this? Yes. Mm. I saw that now, but before you didn't see it because you're thinking, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. Can't possibly yep. think about giving money to anyone else. You know what I mean? Absolutely. What do you think of the advice to diversify your income streams? They always say the average millionaire is seven. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, diversified income streams has come as a, it, it's almost, um, you can't avoid it. Yeah, you, you literally can't avoid that, it, yeah. right? And and the the more success you have in investments, the more um, I just think the more poised you are and calm you are as a human. People trust you to they want to do stuff with you, they want yeah, to partner yeah. with you. There's kind of opportunities everywhere. The the key then is saying no to things that that are going to take up too much of your time. Um, but yeah, you you absolutely can't avoid creating new income streams. When I look at new income streams, it still has to be mobile. And, and leverage like and when i say leverage like whatever you're going to do just be a master of delegation like mm. that's that's what i'm uh, you're never going to be financially free if you can't delegate things outsource yeah outsource or just get rid of the things that you're not inspired by because right. it starts to drain you you start to resent the thing and it kind of has a reverse effect whereas if you go right we've got this opportunity to create more leveraged income we've diversified uh we've got this this opportunity here to create a new income stream but I don't want to get sick of that income stream. I want it to work. Yeah. So what are the bits that I like to do there? And then what don't I want to do? And making sure that you can delegate that. Mm. Otherwise, you'll just be, if you if you don't have a plan for how you spend your time and your money, someone else will have a plan for how you <laughs> spend your time and money. Facts. Right. And uh, and your calendar will just be filled with other people's shoulders to cry on and yeah. all, all this kind of stuff. Right? It's not a way to live, man. No. And that, And then you start going, oh, I don't want to do that again. You know, and then you don't, and then you repel these kind of opportunities that come at you. But diversifying your incomes as a as a strategy is very wise. I yeah. know people say go all in on one. There's truth in all of it, right? Everything's half true. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think yes, if you're an expert at something and you're going in, you're, you're double downing on something because it's got a bigger picture, a bigger outcome. Great, do that. And then once it gets big, then you divert. You take that and yep. you build wealth and you diversify income, right? And it's safe and it brings in lower returns but guess what you don't have to do you don't have to exchange your time for it anymore, yeah absolutely right? that's the first stage right trading your time for money then it becomes oh yeah the opposite absolutely uh, yeah you do have to trade your time for money but you very quick if you want to be free and you want to get there quick you very quickly have to learn how to delegate because not only that if you're in business like you have to you're you're bottlenecking yourself mm -hmm. if, if you're just doing all the crap like crap that you 
you're not inspired to do. And Absolutely. someone else is better at the, you at doing it anyway, you know. So yeah. just that was it. my biggest thing I had to overcome my first few years. Right. Just micromanaging everything, wanting to do customer service, yeah. marketing. Yeah, uh, you just have to everything. let it go, right? It was tough. Yeah, yeah. it's tough. It is tough because when you start, you just don't believe that anyone else can do it like you. Yeah, it's like that, uh, it's like that <laughs> confidence from just not knowing. No, no. And, but the truth is this. There is a kid running a McDonald's, right, who had wiped the floor of most people's business. Like, right. They're dealing with hospitality, drunk people. Yeah. They're like running this system. They're 16 years old, <laughs> whatever <laughs> age it is. They can run a McDonald's, man. You're, you're worried about like, delegating some emails. <laughs> it's like, oh, man. I will wipe the floor yeah, of your There's business. levels. There's levels. There is levels. There did, is levels. Did you make $4 million <laughs> off one YouTube video? Yes. No, that's crazy. Nine million. Nine million? Yeah. Nine million pounds. $12 million. Holy shit. Yeah. What yeah. happened? So I've been chipping away at YouTube for a long time. Um, and hopefully, as I'm coming across here, I'm very honest and transparent. I could have blown my YouTube up and sold the dream to everyone. Yeah. But I stayed very true, very authentic, very, you know, congruent. And, uh, teaching people the truth about this stuff. Mm. Finances, investing, trading. I was letting people watch me trade for free for years. And um, I was just chipping away, chipping away. And then we put our heads together and thought, what would be a great, you know, how could I give YouTube a video and give the audience a video where they could watch it start to finish and not need me mm. ever again? And that was the question that we had in mind. So we sat down, we went start to finish everything that you could think about on trading, speculation, um, strategies, brokers, everything, everything. Laid it all out. Designed a really cool thumbnail that was kind of like the for dummies, uh, you know, the for dummies. Books. Yeah, the yellow ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we kind of ripped off that <laughs> and, and stuck it on and done like a, a variation of that. And it was called Trading for Dummies. Mm. And um, we uploaded it in January. And then by May, it had about 10,000. And then in May, it was getting about, uh, about, 10,000 a day and then it just it just blew up from there and I went from 55,000 subscribers to you know 275,000 subscribers which you know which is crazy on YouTube that's crazy yeah yeah on YouTube is mad and um and that was in the space of a year Jeez. Uh, and and then what I said earlier about like you can't help but make more money um I gave that video away for free and Although the YouTube ad rev on that was, I mean, I'm in the financial education mm. arena. So the, the, yeah, the CPMs ad are high, yeah. high, right? It's like, I think we did about 120 grand on just that video. Wow. But the, um, because we built these great back end systems, we really leveraged that thing. And, you know, just in the first few months, we had 5,550 people buy a 30 day mini program with me mm -hmm. for 297. Holy dollars, crap. which was one point six million dollars. Yeah, and then you know, up till now, it's done nine million. That's, That's insane. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. So almost ten million off one video. Yeah, no ads. I've never placed an ad. I've wow. Never, I don't have an ad account. Incredible. You know, never. We had no marketing, no ads, no staff. <laughs> That's nothing. insane. It's just that's I just spend a lot on ads to get to a million on YouTube. Right. Yeah. yeah. Tens of thousands. I know. Yeah. Most people do. That's yeah. that's why I was asked to speak on stage with Stephen Bartlett and Ali Abdel because that whole event was about marketing. Oh yeah. And I and you're like the organic ad. marketing. Yeah. Like the no ad <laughs> ad, 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 ad guy. The non ad. ad and that's ad. probably more relatable yeah. to people because really running was. ads is hard. Yeah. 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 I think it was a breath of fresh air because you know the whole ad space and Meta and what they do, changing the, it and keeping the, you on your toes. The prices are so expensive. Now. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. So. I mean, I'm sure it'll be something that I'll learn one day, but yeah. I mean, right now it's at the point where people aren't even profiting off the front end. If you don't have a good back end right. with paid ads, you're not even going to make money. Right. So in the back end, we created a, 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 an ecosystem of products that was very leveraged of time. It was like very lean, very low cost, you know, mm -hmm. no staff, no, we've had two um, refunds in, in like, well, in five years of my Damn, business. that's it? Yeah. Holy crap, that's a good product then. Yeah, it's amazing. And the reason being is because we create everything with that in mind. It's like, what what would the business look like if you didn't need money? And and if every, every business owner asked that question, they'd have a remarkable business. Mm. They'd have remarkable conversations with their clients. So that they, they would be stuff in their business that they just wouldn't do, you know. And um, 
And ultimately, they'd, they'd focus on getting results for people instead of making money. Right. You know, that's, that's, that's always been my thing. How can I get a result for someone and then they'll tell someone and they'll tell someone. Brilliant. Because there's a lot of people in your space where their chargeback and, and refund rate is insane. That's they crazy. lose the whole payment processor. One of the biggest guys um, who's actually one of the reasons I got into that, because I, I was just sitting at home, mate. I, I moved our family into our dream house, mm-hmm. you know, amazing house. I was sitting there playing a lot of guitar, <laughs> eating a lot of food, trading. Like, I didn't need to do this. But the reason I started to share my trades, not as a signal service, but mm-hmm. just share an insight into what I was doing, is because there was so much crap. And there was one in particular, massive. He was run to the back of the room, you know, the whole success resources. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And um, his channel just got to 220,000 subscribers and got deleted by YouTube oh. because of harmful content. Holy crap. Yeah. And he hasn't got one testimonial, one good word said by any client. You know, Damn. And, and, and someone who's claiming to have taught thousands of people to trade, you'd think someone would pop up and say, this guy's great. But At least not. one. Yeah. So At I've least always, a fake one, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. So I'll just focus on like getting results, knowing, my, knowing people that I work with, name, yeah. first name basis, going for you know, drinks and meals with them, and, and just... You know, the, You're a needle in the haystack in the Forex space. That's, there's a that's lot exactly of scammers, what I man. wanted to be, man. Dude, yeah. there's so many in that space, because it's easy to manipulate people emotionally in that space. It really is, yeah. You I, show like a good fake trade, they'll be like, oh my gosh, I need to do that. I know, and these traders are doing it. They're, they're, they're taking multiple trades and then showing the winner, or they're doubling down and buy and and you see the screenshots of these apps, you know, and they, oh, yeah. they've got like 50 of the same play so <laughs> as it starts to move they're just playing more and more and more and it's like and if you look at the position size they're, they're risking like 25 percent of their account which Jeez. no trader does you know no, no, that's insane that's that's not professional trading no. that is like literally at the casino <sighs> so yeah you probably only risk like one percent right one percent max yeah, yeah 25 yeah. is nuts it's crazy because you lose that twice you're down 50 percent. and and most human beings cannot stand fluctuations of more than 10 percent no. of anything like if i lost 10% of my friends, it would affect me. Yeah. If I got paid 10%, more than 10% of my average wage at a job, I would be a bit cocky. Yeah. Right? And, and so your emotions start to fluctuate below or my, my plus or minus 10%. Mm. I think that's why, you know, the church figured out oh, 10% God. tithing, right? That's it's the like, most they could take without... <laughs> without people complaining. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, just take it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but if it was 12%, it might... It might yeah, have there's big... something there. Yeah, psychologically, it's that double digit number, Definitely. right? Definitely. Yeah, because if it's like nine, you're like, ah, it's only single digits. Absolutely. 10%. Yeah, so 10%, like evolutionary, we, we just have this kind of threshold, yeah. like a thermostat, where it's like, I can't stand losing 10%. I mean, if I lost 10% of my trading account, I'd be, I'd be sick. I, That's I, why people in crypto have the toughest skin. Oh, man. 10% a day. Uh, yeah. Up and down. Yeah, yeah. And you have to know your stuff. If you're going into crypto... You know, following someone on TikTok just isn't going to come. No, nah, definitely not for crypto. Definitely <laughs> You're playing not. against like pros. Right? Yeah. But Bitcoins is not the move in crypto. It's not the move. Not no. the move at all. Yeah. You have any crypto? <laughs> yeah, I have. Like, I have um, Bitcoin. Okay. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been holding, bit, like, I've been buying Bitcoin year on year for, for a while. I feel that. And that's it. But yeah. Other than that, I don't play it because I just don't know enough about it. I yeah. stick in my lane and do what I'm good at. Absolutely. I'd rather just give someone else, like, if someone's starting a business, I'd rather give them money and go, right, okay, I, I, I understand your business. You've got a good reputation. Mm. You, you know, I diversify my risk and I'll give them money to go and build a corporation and take a, a smaller piece of a big pie rather than a, yeah. a big piece of a volatile pie, which is a headache full mm. of staff and full of, you know, that's not me. That's, uh, I want to enjoy my life. Yeah. I, I feel like equity <clears throat> is how you get to nine figures. Equity Definitely. in businesses. Definitely. It's and scalable. It's scalable. It is slow at first, but it's exponential. Like it is, it just... They say like most people who are really successful um, are in like 45 years old. They start their, their big play. Right. And um, you can, it's obvious that that's why, because you've figured out all the things that don't work. Mm. You've built great connections. You know, you, you know people, you can get things done quicker. Yep. That you've learned, you know, you, you know what works, what doesn't work. You know how to place your money for a better return. And you've whipped you're invited to different conversations and then you could, it's almost like it all comes together and you've got this power to just like do whatever you like. At, yeah. At 40, if you've been in the right, you know, if you've been doing the right thing. Yeah. You're wise at that age, but yeah, look at Cody Sanchez, Hormozzi, Sam Parr, Sean Curry. They're all buying companies right now. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, yeah. That's, that's how wealth is built. But yeah. it, it, with, with regards to crypto, I always say like, if it keeps you up at night, you probably shouldn't have been in it. Like if you're checking, <laughs> if you're checking an app on your phone, you've put too much in 
or you shouldn't be in it at Absolutely. all. Absolutely. I have it. crypto, but I don't check it. Right. That's exactly. how it should be. Yeah. If, if, the more you're up at night or the more you're checking your phone, that's a, a signal that you shouldn't be in that Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. You should have less money in that thing. My mom used to text me every hour, oh, my crypto's down. <laughs> Just sold out a loss. I'm like, you were, you don't have the right mindset for this. Oh man, I feel p- sorry for people that check crypto daily. Oh like that, yeah, that, that, stress yeah. on that. <laughs> <laughs> Not I'm even gonna... daily, hourly. Yeah, some people are like glued to their phones. Yeah, and it, I've seen it, and it ruins ruins lives, man. But um, yeah, just don't don't do it. Absolutely, there's, there's much easier and more fulfilling ways to make money. Yeah, Jason, where can people find your course and what you're up to, man? Yeah, I don't sell like actively sell anything. So uh, all I'd love to promote is my podcast. Okay, you know, if you go and listen to Always Free. Um, from episode one hopefully you're still listening by episode six but i from episode one to episode 20 i give a full like breakdown of what i recommend everyone does to have a free and inspired life like and there's no need to work with me just nice. go and do that wow i love it man we'll link it below <laughs> thanks so much for coming on dude that was thanks fun. man it's been a pleasure yeah thanks for flying out here thanks for watching guys it was fun see you tomorrow cheers